Hello, our scripture reading today is from Jeremiah 34. It starts with the first verse. Jeremiah received the Lord's word when Babylon's King Nebuchadnezzar and his army and all the countries and people he ruled were attacking Jerusalem and all its towns. The Lord, the God of Israel, proclaims, Go and speak to Judah's King Zedekiah and say to him, The Lord proclaims, I'm handing this city over to the king of Babylon and he will burn it down. You won't escape but will be captured and handed over to him. You will see the king of Babylon with your very own eyes and speak to him personally, and you will be taken to Babylon. Even so, hear the Lord's word, King Zedekiah of Judah. This is what the Lord proclaims about you. You won't die in battle. You will die a peaceful death. As burial incense was burned to honor your ancestors, the kings who came before you, so it will be burned to honor you as people mourn. O oh, Master, I myself promise this, declares the Lord. Now, this is the beginning of chapter 34. 34 through 45 are called what's called the Baruch narrative. It's a third person version of Jer Jeremiah's life during the years 588 to 587 BC. And it's Baruch's understanding of what Jeremiah goes through. So obviously Baruch, much like the disciples when they write the gospel lessons, were there, was present was a witness to these events. Now chapter 34 tells us about the siege of Jerusalem. This was when Babylon had finally gotten to the, the walls of Jerusalem, had conquered the rest of the country, the rest of Judah, and was getting ready to enter into the city. And obviously everybody was really afraid and upset. And Jeremiah goes to King Zedekiah and tells him an interesting prophecy, that he will not be killed in battle, but be taken away into exile which doesn't sound like hope. It doesn't really sound like a promise that maybe we even want. Maybe it would be better to die in battle, King Zedekiah thinks. It goes on to tell us a story about the people of Jerusalem and why they deserved to be sieged, why they deserved to be destroyed. In, King, in chapter 34, we hear that they released, had released their slaves as the siege was happening because they no longer wanted to be responsible for the safety of their slaves. Now these were probably debt slaves, fellow country people, fellow Judahites who were debt slaves. So they owed money and they couldn't pay it back. So they, in return, they worked for their master for seven years when they were released. And during the siege, the people of Jerusalem let their slaves go only to gather them back when the siege is done. You see, they gave them hope and they yanked that rug right out from under them. This evidence of self-centeredness, of selfishness, of an unaware, a lack of being aware of their impact on fellow humans, on humans who had less, who needed more care, is exactly why God says they are being destroyed and sent into exile. It's as, it's as if God sees that even when given the chance, even when the destruction is at their doorstep, they are incapable of change. In the next few chapters, we hear about what happens because they are unable to.